Hey everybody, Ethan here. Welcome to Hello Road. So I did it again. I bought another weird car. This is my 1986 Nissan Stanza Wagon. I just got it. It's known as the Multi in Canada and the Prairie everywhere else. Yes, it's strange looking, but wait, before you furiously attempt to click away from this video to find something else to watch, hear me out. This tall, awkward vehicle was actually ahead of its time and it was fairly well received, at least for its practicality and its versatility. I mean, look at all this space for my leftover 1980s crap. The new 1986 Nissan Stanza Wagon. The only wagon with dual sliding doors. The Stanza Wagon converts quickly with room for everything. The Stanza Wagon is sort of a cross between a van, a utility vehicle, and a station wagon. Some even consider it the first minivan. It's widely accepted that the Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager twins were the first minivans, but you could argue it was actually this Nissan. It debuted in Japan as the Prairie in 1981, well before the Chrysler vans came on the scene. But back in 81, the term minivan had yet to be invented. Because of import quotas, Nissan delayed the US introduction until 1986. By the time it hit US shores, its styling was showing its age. And being a bit smaller than a minivan, it wasn't quite a minivan. And being a bit tall for a station wagon with sliding doors, it wasn't quite a station wagon. Buyers must have just been really confused. All right, let's take a look around this odd vehicle. Starting with the most innovative feature, the dual sliding doors. This was the first vehicle to offer sliding doors on both sides of the car. There are modern cars like double cab pickups and the Honda Element that have doors that lock to each other. But the Stanza design is way cooler. They latch to the chassis so they can be operated independently. And you may notice that there's no B pillar between either of these doors. And as you might imagine, occupants of this car may not fare too well in the case of a side impact. So check this out, this car only has 50,000 miles on it. That's only about 1,600 miles per year. But the car had been sitting for a while and it kind of smells in here a little bit. Somehow, this is the second car I've managed to buy that smells like pee. So yeah, one of the first things you notice is this lovely 80s graph paper gauge cluster. Pretty standard climate controls. Except for the AC button is way down here. One thing you notice with this interior is that they have this huge space here for a clock, but the radio is way down here. So it looks like Nissan tried to fix that by putting a couple radio controls up here. So you can scan your stations and turn your volume up and down, but that's pretty much it. Now check out this. The window rollers fold into the door. So that way when you open the door, they don't get caught. But one thing you might notice, this is as far as the window rolls down. Why? So today I thought it would be fun to drive this weird little Japanese car to the Japanese gardens in Van Nuys, California, just a few miles from here. This car has quite a few electrical gremlins that I need to take care of, so I don't really want to drive it too far just yet. It stalls quite a bit, none of the gauges work, the brakes are kind of weak, but let's ignore all that and see if it'll make it, shall we? you notice in here besides the squared off angular 80s look is the incredible visibility. You sit up high and the windows are tall. So tall in fact that the previous owner called this car the Pope Mobile. When this car was first released it baffled auto journalists with its strange and awkward styling and it certainly confused most car buyers. These things didn't sell very well. I'm really glad that I came across this little car. Cars like this are generally treated as disposable and sent to the junkyard when major problems arise. It's pretty cool that there's still a few of these things left buzzing around out there. And incredibly rare to find one with only 50,000 miles on it.
Okay, let's talk acceleration. This two liter motor came with 97 horsepower from the factory, which wasn't terrible for a small car back in the mid 80s. Let's hit the top secret Hello Road test track, a deserted road, and see just how slow this car is. Okay, 1986, Nissan stands a wagon, zero to 60 test in three, two, one, go. All right, first gear, 25, still in first. 35, second gear, up to 45, 50, 55, 60, and it ships to third. I mean, it's slow, but you gotta remember, this is an economy car from the mid 80s. Two liters of raw Nissan power. All right, let's talk handling, or how crazy the handling is in this car. Because of the torsion beam suspension used to allow for a completely flat loading floor in the back, the handling of this car is, shall we say, suboptimal. That, coupled with the lack of a B pillar, make for some unique handling characteristics. The tall stature means that body lean is very pronounced, which is fun. Japanese gardens. Let's go take a look around. Its name in Japanese translates to the garden of water and fragrance. As you travel further into the garden, you're greeted by waterfalls, winding pathways, symbolic trees, hand carved stone lanterns from Japan, a floating bridge, and plenty of places to rest and enjoy the tranquility. Over the years, this location has been used for several films and TV shows, such as Austin Powers and Star Trek The Next Generation. And you may recognize the futuristic administration building right here, which doubled as Starfleet Academy. Strolling through these gardens really puts you in a different world. It allows you to forget about the bustling city just outside the gates. But I gotta say it, the further I walk into this place, the more I'm noticing a strange odor. Kind of reminds me of my stanza just a little bit. so many birds here. Check out this night heron. There are also cormorants, osprey, and even coots. Um, that odor is getting stronger. It's not entirely pleasant. What is that right over there? Actually, it looks like you can go up there. Let's go check it out. Hmm, viewing tower. What is that? It's a coot. That's a cool sound, little coot. Well, let's go check out whatever the heck this viewing tower is. Uh, okay, I'm starting to see what's going on here. Turns out that this is a wastewater treatment plant. This plant treats up to 80 million gallons of reclaimed water every day, and it provides all of the water to the lovely ponds and gardens right next door. Well, there you have it. I think we've discovered the source of the smell. The entire purpose of this garden is to demonstrate a practical and positive use of wastewater. So I gotta say it, the Japanese gardens provide a great use of reclaimed water. But being directly adjacent to the treatment plant leaves a little bit to be desired in the smell department. Speaking of smell, I nearly forgot that this stanza reeks. Come on, vanilla aroma, do your job. Even though this car is strange looking and quite rare nowadays, it still flies under the radar. Most people don't know what it is, other than maybe some random disposable car from the 80s. I like the fact that it's a bit awkward. Its shape is an honest representation of the vehicle's intent. They didn't try to hide its utilitarian nature, its function over form. The stanza wagon was just a little bit misunderstood. No one could really classify what it was. And I think that's what made it so great.
Thanks for checking out the latest hoopty in my crappy car collection. Please subscribe if you want to see what terrible car I buy next. And of course, I'll be driving to another unique location. See you in a couple weeks.